Hello? All right, it's March 3rd, 2018, Saturday, 10.27 a.m. Here I wanted to share a little book, another book review. This book is called Long Pilgrimage, The Life and Teachings of the Shiva Puri Baba. This book is really amazing. Start off, it's not well known. Uh, that's part of the reason I wanted to do a book review for it. Compared to a lot of the writings of like really enlightened yogis and really wise people and people who conquered their their uh, small self, um, this is really not that well known. Only reason I know about this book is because uh, it happened. There happened to be a copy of it in the library uh, at this uh, ashram that I would go to in Northeast Georgia called the Center for Spiritual Awareness Kriya Yoga Ashram, like from those that tradition that guy Yogananda. Um, and just before I go into it, this book is a really great remedy for strengthening your sun, Mars, or Jupiter. Um, some of the best ways to strengthen those planets is by reading the teachings of enlightened masters and reading, you know, the spiritual wisdom of people who've actually gone through the motions and actually have done it and woken up and aren't just kind of talking about intellectual stuff that they've read and that they're just regurgitating to you. It's what you find. It's probably what most of what you'll find on YouTube, you know, these days and most places. Everyone wants to be a teacher, but no one wants to be a student. No one wants to actually put the time in and experience the states that they'd rather we wanted to talk about, it, you know? This guy was the opposite, okay? This guy, he was born as a twin, funny enough, but his grandfather was a really amazing astrologer, and this is kind of cool because it ties into astrology. His grandfather did his chart when he was born, and he determined that this twin, the other one's a girl, this one is going to fulfill the family lineage, and this other one is going to maintain the family like uh, materially and everything like at home. And this this boy was. He read his chart then, his grandson, and he decided this boy's destiny is to get enlightened and then to walk around the entire planet, to take a pilgrimage around the entire planet, spreading the enlightened consciousness by foot. And that that would somehow like fulfill this like, uh, this like karmic destiny of their family line or something. And he was able to see all that in the birth chart. And, uh, we don't, I don't know his actual birth chart, unfortunately, but it says in here that he was born in 1826. <sighs> this guy's story is just almost unbelievable if it weren't for the pictures that you see and everything in here. But to not give away too many spoilers, but to briefly give a synopsis, He's taught everything by his grandfather up until like the age of 12 or 13. He's taught the Vedas. He's taught like the proper ways to meditate and all this stuff. And then at around, uh, gosh, it's either 13 or 18. By the time he's 16, 18, something around that age, he sets off. He departs from his grandfather. His grandfather's like, you're ready to go now. You're ready to do this and to, and to go and wake up. He sets off into the woods. He starts walking into the jungle, okay? Um, he, his goal is to find a spot where he can be completely isolated and just meditate and just be in a spot where he can live off the roots and fruits available in the jungle so he doesn't have to worry about cooking or food or any obligations. He can just eat, meditate, read the one book he brought, the Bhagavad Gita, chant, sleep, repeat. And yeah, he only brings one book, the Bhagavad Gita, and that book his entire teaching emphasis is encapsulated in that one book. It's really pretty cool. His teaching is so simple, too. But basically, he, he says that the last two weeks of his walk into the jungle, he didn't see a single soul. So he went so far deep into the jungle that he didn't see a single human for two weeks of walking into a jungle. India is a big space. still a lot of jungle. Back then, there was a lot more jungle. Um... He finds a spot, he begins doing it. 40 years go by. He actually doesn't even know how much time goes by meditating. He seriously says that he loses track, complete track of time or any relativeness of any sort. 
and it is only when he went back out of afterwards that he learned how much time he had spent and everything. But he ends up spending 42 years, if I remember correctly, in a jungle, just committed until he sees the vision of God and gets God realized. He eventually gets God realized. His mission in that jungle is accomplished. Then he goes on and he goes about going on a pilgrimage by foot from that part which I think was sort of like on the eastern side of the of India. He goes west. He goes all through India. He visits different saints and sages. They talk about it in here. He visited with Ramakrishna, Sri Aurobindo, all these other saints and mystics. He goes through <clears throat> the Middle East. He walks through parts of desert that no human has been able to walk through by foot. Uh, that is miraculous how he did it. They don't know how he did it. He did it, though. He sailed the parts that he had to, that he couldn't go by foot. He took, he sailed. He gets to England. He actually has a long relationship with Queen Victoria. And he visits with her like 16 times. And he stays even longer until she passes away. It's like a really weird, mysterious uh, interaction and relationship that he had with Queen Victoria, the Queen of England. And England has this weird, weird karmic connection to Vedic culture. It's weird like that. Um... <clears throat> And then he goes to America, and then he even meets with Theodore Roosevelt, who was also a big fan of astrology, by the way. And he had a Theodore Roosevelt had a plaque of his birth chart in the Oval Office. That's another side note, though. Um, <clears throat> and then he goes across America, goes across the country, sails, gets to Asia, continues walking, walks through all of Asia, eventually makes it back. And after visiting people with people, he settles down in Nepal, and then he spends like 80 years in Nepal. And this guy lives. I don't even remember how many years old he lives to be, but here's him at 112 years of age. The, the photo from the cover of the book, 112 years of age. There's him too. Look at these photos. I mean, just look at those photos. I think the book's almost worth getting just for the photos. If you need some inspiration to meditate. Look at the sky. Yeah, so that's basically the uh, <clears throat> the reason I would suggest this book. If you're trying to strengthen your sun, your Jupiter, your Mars, your ethics, you're trying to be a sadhu, you're trying to wake up, embrace the yogic path, <clears throat> <clears throat> trying to discipline yourself, <clears throat> this guy's a really great inspiration. Here he is at age 124. There's a lot of wild other stories in here. He, uh, he, this guy, in my opinion, must have had a really strong Leo stuff going on, Leo Swampsha. And uh, I do think Jupiter was in Leo during part of that year <clears throat> that he was born. So that would be a good hint. Um, this guy, I think he was a Leo Swampshire because he was so fixed. Like, who could be so consistent to go into the jungle and meditate? Jungle is also Leo environment, as I've covered in my series on the environments in the Zodiac. Um, <clears throat> he had a very, uh, like, disciplined, strict, action, Shiva-like path. Not as much of a lunar, yin type of path for him. But he did it, you know? He did it and he achieved the goal. And this book is written by an English person who happened to find him and just went and visited him with him and studied a lot. One more neat thing about the Leo is that I've talked about how Leo relates to lions and wild beasts of prey. Um, in Jaimini he calls the sign Leo Seisha Swapadini, which means wild beasts of prey, but also one's own place remains. So it's sort of like a play on words about being territorial, but also dealing with wild beasts of prey. So this guy actually, believe it or not, you don't have to believe me, but According to the government of Nepal and according to all of his followers, he had like a pet tiger that would come and sit near him. And I, I don't know if there's a photo of that in here, but that's actually like a thing that a lot of yogis have done, have actually befriended tigers and just had weird, unique relationships with tigers. But that's a <laughs> kind of another topic for another day. Um, and if you want more... In examples of that, you can read about the Tiger Swami in the chapter called that in the book Autobiography of a Yogi. You can read about the Tiger Swami there. Um, but there's actually been a lot of uh, yogis who have either been foolish, crazy enough, dumb enough, or powerful enough to 
try to tame wild tigers and <clears throat> have a relationship with them. And there's other yogis who have trained tigers even to become vegetarian and to live off of just drinking milk, believe it or not, and not even eating animals. So you won't read about that on the news or in Wikipedia or hear about this book at all for that matter because this book is not well known. It is a little gem, a little diamond in the rough. So I wanted to give a book review of this. Five out of five stars. Check this book out. It's amazing. Oh. <laughs>